Hi, my name is Deborah, and this is the edit by DH. Welcome to another video. This video is all about the collaboration between Lancôme and the Louvre Museum. This is my second attempt to do a video just because, surprise, surprise, the English weather. It was a nightmare the first time. The sun didn't know whether it was coming or going. At one point it was too bright and then suddenly it went dark all of a sudden. So it was very dramatic. One thing is for sure, autumn is definitely on the way. I'm in my jumper and I have a nice cup of hot tea with me, ready to film this video with you guys. I just wanted to get in the mood with my jumper. In case you guys can't see, Paris, Paris. We are going to Paris today, virtually, I guess, due to the collaboration. So Lancôme itself is a French brand and they have collaborated with the Louvre Museum. They have collaborated for a limited edition for beauty collection. And the faces, there are several famous faces heading this campaign, including Zendaya and Amanda Seyfried. I hope that I've said their names right. But also Aya Nakamura and Hiko. I hope I said that right. They are all four main faces of the campaign and they're all very, very beautiful and elegant in their own way. I am reviewing this collection one because I tend to review luxury brands on this channel, if you guys don't know already. But two, because I personally love the Louvre. It's such a beautiful museum, it's iconic, not only in terms of the design, the pyramid, but also in terms of what they have in the Louvre. Like the Mona Lisa, for example, is in the Louvre, as well as other famous paintings and sculptures, which I'll be talking about in just a moment. I think I've been to the Louvre about two, three times, I would say, but it's definitely my favourite. It's a toss up between that, uh, the Louvre and the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. But yeah, I am a huge fan. And thirdly, it makes absolute sense for me to review this collection because Lisa Eldridge, if you didn't know, helped to create the collection as she is a creative director for Lancome. And again, if you don't know and if you haven't followed me on my channel before, I review a lot of Lisa Eldridge launches. In fact, I, I review all of them. So if you're into Lisa Eldridge, if you're into luxury beauty, then please do subscribe if you haven't already. So when I was reading into this collection, I was so intrigued. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, I need it in my life. The design takes inspiration from some of the famous sculptures in the museum, in the Louvre, including Venus de Milo, Diana of Gabi, the Victory of Samothrace, Hygieia, etc. The president and director of the Louvre Museum, Laurence Descartes, he said, I am thrilled by this first collaboration with Lancôme, which skillfully illustrates the diverse forms of beauty presented by the Louvre's collections, where cultures and civilizations meet beyond land and time. The Louvre Museum's collections are fascinating in the way that they let us see and understand how those standards are interpreted, transform and evolve. Through this collaboration, the Louvre, a temporary art hub, helps write today's take on beauty. So as part of this collection, there are three main items, which is the Advanced Genevieve Serum, which I haven't got, but just to show you on the screen, it is, I believe, an existing serum it has a limited edition design as part of this collection. I will go through all of these in just a moment. And then I also got the L'Absolu La Rouge Drama Matte Lipstick. It's available in four different shades. Again, with the unique design and the Richelieu Wing Face and Eyeshadow Palette. I have got the lipstick, one of them, and I've got the face and eyeshadow palette, which I'll go through in just a moment. But I just wanted to give you information about the serum first, which I didn't get. So it says our most advanced skin repair serum for healthy, younger looking skin in seven days. Wow, big claim. The fundamental step in every skincare routine, advanced Genifique serum instantly strengthens and repairs the skin barrier, formulated with pre and probiotic fractions, hyaluronic acid and vitamin C. This repairing serum helps improve skin quality, boosts radiance and visibly reduce fine lines and wrinkles. Born from 20 years of research in microbiome science, Advanced Genifique patented serum contains 6 billion pre and probiotic fractions in every bottle. 
In Greek mythology, Hygie, daughter of Asclepius, god of medicine, and Epione is the goddess of health, cleanliness, and hygiene. She embodies the expression kalos kagathos, used in ancient Greece to designate beauty and goodness. Hygie is the work of the French sculptor Jean-Baptiste Lemoyne and is depicted holding a cup symbolizing medicine around which the serpent of wisdom coils, symbolizing healing or remedy. This is why she was chosen to wrap our iconic Genevieve serum bottle, a goddess of health for healthy skin. With the serum, your skin is better equipped to face external stresses that can lead to faster aging. Then if you actually look on the website, there is more information about the goddess of health and care, which is Hygieia. I hope I said it right. And it just gives you a bit more information about her, which I love because I always love to know the inspiration behind the design or why something was named what it was named. So it's always so interesting to read that. I won't read it out to you. You guys can read it for yourself. But trust me when I say that when I was doing some light research for this video, I literally went down a rabbit hole and then one search led to another search and then suddenly I felt like I was studying ancient Greek mythology and then an advanced class to French words. So yeah, it was just, it, you just go down a rabbit hole. So if you're interested in all of this, please have a read yourself because it's very interesting. So the serum is £90 for 50 ml. Like I said, I believe it's an existing item is just if you like that limited edition design i know some people are suckers for limited edition designs next up is the l'absolu rouge drama matte so the packaging as you can see it's looks like this and then it's got the longcom logo at the top and if you just press it it pops out and there is the lipstick now because of the light even though it is natural light it is bright etc i will show you on the screen just because you will see it better it's more accurate you can see it when i first opened it and it was a fresh beautifully fresh lipstick which i always love so this is the limited edition powdery matte finish long wear and lasting comfort it says get ready for the ultimate bold matte finish with l'absolu rouge drama matte lipstick long wearing lasting comfort Flawless colour and powdery matte finish. Apply in a single stroke and choose from 15 shades. Dramatic, without the impact of dry lips. The iconic formula is now enriched with pure pigments for an intense, crisp colour and rose extracts for lasting, luxurious comfort. Vibrant colour and luxurious care. No compromise needed. The intensity of colour meets comfort on your lips. Experience exquisite timeless hues or creative signature star shades applied with the new petal sculpted shape encapsulated in a new high-end luxury case made in France. Now, the next line then says, this is a long way foundation. So clearly whoever checks or does the, uh, the final checks for the website, that person doesn't exist. Or if they do exist, they're not doing a very good job because there are quite a few errors, which I will kind of mention at the end when I do my conclusion. But anyway, ignore that this is a long way foundation because it's not. It says, lipsticks wrapped in stories of beauty Four masterpieces, each telling a story of femininity. Four red shades, inspired by the halls and galleries inside the Louvre. The iconic matte lipstick formula is now enriched with pure pigments for an intense, crisp colour and rose extracts for a lasting, luxurious comfort. I believe the L'Absolute Rouge Drama Matte is an existing lipstick range. My Lancome fan duties out there can confirm or deny this for me. But I believe as part of the limited edition collection, not only does it come in this unique design and packaging, but it also comes in four red shades specific to this collection, specifically with this design on the outside. So it says, it's inspired by the nymph scorpion. Nymph with scorpion tells the story of a sitting nymph whose foot has just been stung by a scorpion. A sculpture in momentum, as the viewer can see, this precise moment just after her stinging. Her gaze, her position, the way she seems to be about to pinch her lips in pain, the way she's frowning, the scorpion nearby are all clues to her story. A story of beauty to wrap iconic L'Absolu Rouge lipstick 196. So I've got colour 196. That means... Each, oh wow, so okay, each of the four lipsticks have the four different designs. I thought it was all the same, but it's not. So it probably looked the same in terms of being um, the neutral shade with the face of whoever it's inspired by. So I've got 196, like I said, which was inspired by the Nymph Scorpion. Then the colour 274 is inspired by Diane or Diana de Gabi. Then 
200 is inspired by Hermaphrodite and 105 is inspired by Nymph Echo. Gosh, I hope I am pronouncing these correctly. Now, on the English website, it only gives a number for the colour, so it's 196. But on the box, it says 196 French Touch. And if, when I looked on the American website, it gives the actual name, which the UK website doesn't have for some bizarre reason. So it's 196 or French Touch, whichever. I hope it helps you. Because I'm going to be doing an eye look, you'll understand more in just a moment. Because I'm going to be doing an, a more of a, an eye look, I wanted to just keep my lips bare. So I've got something else on my lips which is a Lisa Eldridge lipstick. I will link everything I'm wearing right now. I will link everything I'm wearing right now down below. I wanted to still show you this color, 196 French Touch. It's so stunning. And in fact, in my opinion, it doesn't look like what it looks like in the bullet on, if that makes sense. So I will show you swatches. I'll show you what it looks like on me so that you have an idea. So beautiful, so expensive feeling. But anyway, I will give you my final thoughts on it all at the very end. Then last but certainly not least is the Richelieu Wing Palette. So this is an eyeshadow and highlighter palette. So if you look inside, this is what it looks like. It also comes with two applicators, I guess you could call it. Both are double sided, two sponges on one end and then one more thinner sponge applicator tip. And I guess that's more for like, if you want to use it as an eyeliner or want more precision with the application and then a brush end. But to be honest, I personally prefer to use my fingers. And I also think that this is great if you want to say wet it and use it more of, of a wet eye look, but I will just use it as a normal eyeshadow for today's look. This is the outer packaging. I think it doesn't compare to the inner packaging, which is way more beautiful. So this palette is 75 pounds for 15 grams of product. So that will be, all of these will equate to 15 grams. I think the design is just so beautiful. It, it, the design in itself is a work of art, which should come as no surprise because it was created by Lisa Eldridge. So four squares are eyeshadows, and then this is the highlighter. So this green is called, and by the way, you you almost feel like you need a master's in French to pronounce these names. So this colour, the green one, is called Cour Puget Peridot. Then the one below it is called Royal Palace Pink, a lot easier to say. The one in the middle is Cour Mali Marble, and you can see it's got this sort of like marble design. Then this one is called Cour Curry Copper Light. And then the highlighter shade is the Richelieu Gallery Light. They are absolutely stunning colours. Needless to say, none are matte. They are all some sort of like shimmery colour. This green particularly got my attention because it's so different to the rest of the colours, but also because it's sort of like duochrome. And yeah, it's such a stunning colour. I've already had a little bit of a play. Again, rather than doing live swatches right now, it's better for me to show you on screen what the swatches look like. Just FYI, nothing has been touched up, nothing has a filter on it, it's all in natural light so you can see the accuracy of it. So before I apply it, I will just tell you a bit more about it. The Richelieu Wing Colour Palette combines a highlighter plus four unique shades of eyeshadow inspired by the famed Richelieu Gallery of the Louvre. The unique blendable and buildable texture offers infinite possibilities of makeup looks. This makeup palette celebrates the sculpture of Corinne, a Greek poetess, of the 5th century BC presented in the Richelieu wing of the Louvre. The poetry of this palette created by Lisa Eldridge is inspired by the gallery's magnetic light, punctuated by the relief of the sculptures and revealing their astonishing beauty. The palette's shades are powered by Prisma technology for ultimate colour impact and shimmer. Each shade takes its name from a different part of the Richelieu wing, from eyeshadow, the shade of Peridot inspired by the Cour Puget, to the copper light Cour Curry, the marble shade of the Cour Mali, to the pink shade of the Royal Palace. So, I am going to go straight in with the MAC Painterly Pro Longwear Paint Pot. Colour is painterly. I'm going to just use my finger because it's easiest. And though the eyeshadow palette has a mirror, I kind of just want to keep the sticker on it. I think I quite like it for now because it says Lancôme X Louvre. I'm just going to keep it on for now. 
So just applying, I already have eyeliner and mascara. I've already had a bit of a long day, so I'm just going to apply this color on top and just build on my existing makeup. Then I'm going to go in with the green, straight in with the green, um, and use it like a soft smoke look. So I'm just going to go on my finger, I just find with shimmers, just using your finger makes it adhere better to the skin. Having had experience of using this, there is fallout, FYI. So really, in any normal circumstance, I would always do the eyeshadow first and then my base. But since I've already, you know, I've already been out and about, I had to put makeup, some makeup on. So it's not ideal to do it in this order, but it is what it is. Can you see how vivid that green is as I apply it? It's so stunning. Obviously, you could do a more subtle look with this eyeshadow, but I wanted to go big or go home. Sometimes I feel like with green eyeshadows, it's just lacking an oomph. Sometimes you just want it to be green, like the name. You just want it to really have this... There's a richness to greens, I believe. And sometimes the colour doesn't have any richness to it. Whereas this has it in spades. So as soon as I saw this colour and swatched it and played around with it, I was like living for it. So... I've just applied it with my finger, as you saw, very quickly. I'm now going to just blend it out. Anything I use, I will link down below. Then I'm going to put a little bit underneath as well. So like I said, you don't have to do it as a full in-your-face eyeshadow look, or smoky eyeshadow look, should I say. You can use it as an eyeliner. You can do it as a pop of colour, like in the inner corner or even an outer wing, whichever, you know, play around with it. I think that's why it said you can create endless looks with this. But this colour is just so, 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 so stunning. I love it so much. Normally, I would put one of these sort of highlighter colour shades in the centre as like a spotlight, but I want to keep this as pure as possible. Today, I want to be a Puritan. So I'm just going to use this colour underneath, the Royal Palace colour, I think that's what it's called, yeah, Royal Palace Pink, in the inner corner as a pop. Also, I got a red lipstick, as you guys saw, which was absolutely stunning. And it's not to say that you can't wear like a green eyeshadow with red lipstick, but for me, on my face, I felt like it would have been too much. And I didn't want to feel like the Joker from Batman, so I just <laughs> tried to keep it balanced with a smoky eye and a nude lip. Then I'm going to go in with the Richelieu highlighter at the top, like as a spotlight or in the inner corner of your eye. It's going to pop a little bit. My face is so shiny. Let me just quickly mattify my face first. Otherwise, you won't know where highlighter begins and where sweat ends or where sweat begins and highlighter ends so let me just quickly mattify so my foundation or my base it was looking great and then i had the day that i had which included going to a pilates class in the morning which included going to a sauna and something about the sauna although it's great for your skin i feel like it separated my makeup a little bit so didn't have time to reapply, so please just make do with what's on my face. But I promise you, my skin was looking better than this in the morning. So I'm just going to go in with a Richelieu highlighter, like I said. And just popping it onto the high points. Well. I tend to prefer liquid highlighters these days, but sometimes I like to wear a powder highlighter for the evenings. And I will say it's also it's more practical because your hair doesn't stick to your face constantly. But this is absolutely stunning. If I'm going to wear a highlighter, I want it to be picked up by NASA because what is the point of wearing a highlighter if it's subtle, right? So I really, really love this. And this is a very simple, quick eye, which I'm now going to just complete, I guess, with a little bit more eyeliner just because... Like I said, I wore my eyeliner first thing in the morning and it hasn't done bad, actually. It hasn't done bad at all. I will link it down below. It's a Bobbi Brown one. Absolutely love it. And it stays put. For this eye look, I'm actually going to use the Lisa Eldridge new Seamless Glide Eye Pencil, which, in my opinion, doesn't last that long in terms of longevity, but it is great if you use it and um, blend it out so almost like a smoked look so I'm just going to 
put a bit on top of the existing liner and it's great because I'm using the color Night Forest so it kind of is in the same color family and I'm just going to use her brush to blend it out like I said everything will be linked down below and it adds sort of like a depth but in the same green kind of color family the one good thing about this pencil is it's very creamy so it works well with other products whether powder or cream so i've just used it as like a subtle liner slash built up the smokiness of the eye and mainly concentrated on the ends of my eye as you can hopefully see night forest i feel like this green the peridot just brings out the greeniness of the night forest which is very pretty and they work very harmoniously together what are my thoughts on this collection and do you need it in your life firstly with the palette i think that the colors used are gorgeous i was personally surprised that she had three very sort of similar colors i know they're different tones like this is more pink champagne golden color then there's like a copper color but they're pretty samey samey i guess maybe she wanted to include a shade that could be universally flattering which they pretty much are this green would i feel like suit almost every single person on this planet and again this highlighter would work but again i feel like if you're warmer skin tone you could possibly go even go in with the gold if you wanted to and play around with it i i do love the colors i just wish she had maybe a slightly different tone a bronzier tone or I don't know, something different, but I get that she was obviously inspired by the Richelieu wing and so had to stay true to the inspiration. I love the design. I think it makes it look super expensive and I love the inspiration behind the design because you can really feel like you've got a piece of Paris and Louvre with you in this palette. I would like to play around with these colours a little bit more. Perhaps I'd wear these colours with the red lipstick next time, but I am... Like this green alone makes me love this palette. Like I said, it does have a little bit of fallout. So if you want to do a smoky eye look, I would highly recommend doing the eye first and then doing your base. I would highly recommend using your fingers rather than the brush. But these applicators could be quite cool if you want to like wet it and use it as a, a wet tool. So that's, that's an option anyway. Then the lipstick. I think the colour is so beautiful. It really, like when I wore it, I felt very Parisian. And that's a compliment for me. Parisian women are just very chic without trying so hard. And that's the beauty of their, that's the beauty of their beauty. You know, they, they look chic and beautiful without trying hard. It's that effortless look that I love so much about the Parisian women, the Parisian beauty. And that red lipstick, even though I was wearing it with like a casual shirt, with jeans even if i wore like a, this jumper or like a white t-shirt it would just instantly elevate your look and some reds dare i say although i'm a huge red lipstick lover i feel like it can make you look a little bit tacky perhaps a little bit clowny and that tends to happen when it's not the right kind of shade or tone or, or the right undertone but with this particular red lipstick the 196 french touch appropriately named I just felt very elevated and expensive, like I said. I obviously don't have the other shades of the lipstick to swatch for you, but do have a look on the website. The only two things I will say is that the lipstick is more of an obvious matte finish. So if you are somebody that doesn't like matte lipsticks or finishes, this is not for you. No matter you know what you do, it's not for you. And last but not least, there is a fragrance to it. Now, when I looked at the fragrance, it seemed to be almost at the bottom of the list, of the ingredients list. However, for me, the fragrance is pretty strong. Maybe not as strong as Gucci makeup, if you guys have tried it. But for me, I, I can smell it. And the thing is, again, it's not a deal breaker. Again, there are two camps, people who don't mind the scent. In fact, there are people who love the scent and then there's people like myself who aren't big scent lovers. And by the way, I like certain scents like citrus scents or very fresh scents that are from like natural oils, for example. But 
I'm not very keen on perfumey scents or worse, vanilla, caramel. The thing about this lipstick is the scent is still quite expensive. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you get drugstore lipsticks, you, they're often, they often smell like really fake caramel, vanilla, like really cheap candles. That's what they like smell like to me. And it gives me a headache. It's cloying. It's sickly. In fact, even Charlotte Tilbury, even though her lipsticks aren't cheap, they smell like that to me. Whereas with this Lancome one, it's more like a fragrance. It smells more like a perfume rather than something cheap. But for me, it's still unnecessary. It's still a little, little bit strong. I would rather have done without the fragrance, but hey ho, some brands just like to put fragrance in their lipsticks. But just based off the color alone, I would absolutely wear this lipstick again. So it's yeah, it's just so stunning, like I said, and, and makes me feel expensive, which is what every woman wants, right? I would love to know whether you'd like me to review Lancome more on my channel. This is my first technically official Lancome review. And even though I've tried some products, like I've tried obviously the mascaras, which I know they're famous for. I've tried the liquid eyeliner, which is fantastic. And I remember just loving it, the matte one. It just didn't budge. But if there's anything else that you would highly recommend that I use or try out, or if you'd like me to start reviewing Longcom on my channel, then please do let me know. And let me know what you would recommend. What, what should I start with first? The website I found, the Longcom website, the UK Longcom website to be precise, was very user unfriendly. <laughs> it was very slow. When I clicked on the ingredients, the button was almost like a dead button. There was no function to it. It didn't do anything. So I don't know whether that's a technical glitch, temporary technical glitch, or whether it's an issue. Like I said earlier in the lipstick section, it spoke about foundation for some bizarre reason. So people just felt a bit like messy when I was reading it, which you wouldn't expect from a, a high-end luxury makeup brand. But the same problem didn't exist with the American website, by the way, because when I went on the American website, everything worked as it was supposed to. And in fact, it had a little bit more information. So yeah, it's very strange, but maybe they were doing like updates or something when I was in the middle of looking at the website. So please do let me know your thoughts on this collection. I try to include a little bit of everything without boring you guys to death. But like I said, if you are into, you know, art and history and you love to know about the inspiration behind things, then do go check out the website. More importantly, or even better, if you can go to the Louvre directly, then even better. And I love Paris anyway, but I kind of want to do one more trip to Paris before I move to Asia next year. So I am now inspired and, and kind of want to go back to the Louvre. And if I do, I'll definitely be heading to the Richelieu wing to have a look at what inspired Lisa when she came up with this collection. So yeah, please do let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the collection, the color, the pieces, the choices, the prices? But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review and I will see you very, very soon for another video. Take care.